Now, I believe that we're really getting in over our head as a society when it comes to artificial intelligence. We are about to live in a world where superhuman agents, software, can be spun up in the cloud and put to work on a goal of your choosing. And that's not a guess. We've already seen AutoGPT. We just know that needs some more iterations. But thinking about it, the next step means that anybody who has a project can spin up 10, 100, 1,000 of these agents to work 24 seven for them. And if you just think about what that means for a minute, it means small businesses have all these employees they've never had before. That's gonna completely change the way that we should be measuring the economy. In fact, it really changes what we even think of as an economy. Adam Smith or Karl Marx, neither of them had an answer for this kind of a world. And if it's not about having a job and getting money, then we need to rethink the actual principles that we live by. Rethinking the notion of value fundamentally, relationships fundamentally, but I just can't imagine this world where we have these autonomous agents that can be bundled up and packaged and set out to do tasks and that the result of their task is a product that ends up out in the marketplace and the market mechanism finds it a value. Because if I see some software out there like Photoshop that I want, I'll just have my own agent build the whole thing for me for free. Anything digital that's not scarce probably by being locked into a blockchain or something similar just won't be valuable because it can instantly be automated, simulated, requested, done. I mean, our attention is a fine finite resource. So some people who control attention will probably still be very valuable. And people who do certain things in the real world that we just don't have digital alternatives for and want to have in the real world will be super valuable. But when a pharmaceutical company has a million incredibly smart Einsteins working on drug discovery, they're gonna come up with drugs to solve problems that have never been solved before very quickly. When the drug manufacturing companies have millions of these superhuman autonomous agents, they're gonna find better way to manufacture and deliver them to us. And that's why it doesn't seem completely crazy when Ray Kurzweil says, I think immortality will be an option for us all in the next 20 years. And it probably won't be like end of life immortality either. It could be more cyberpunk, kind of like connect to cyborgs and to the internet, right into the brain kind of thing. Or maybe people just feel like that's not human and they want to live out a life just as long as they want to and then they sort of choose when they want their end to be. And I know there might be a tendency to kind of like disregard me now, like tune it out because you think this guy is just like a sci-fi nerd and he's like pushing this kind of vision for the future, which is pretty unrealistic. And I don't see the future, you could be right. Sometimes I've been overly optimistic in the past, but I've been doing an artificial intelligence YouTube channel where I've done daily uploads. I've worked all day every day for a few months now, and I'm starting to see it culminate into just a future that I didn't expect. Or at least I didn't expect this soon. And then when I apply the obvious exponential curve to a lot of this stuff, that's just the position I end up at. And then diving into what makes ChatGPT so magical, word phrases, tokenized, put in a latent space, and then their distance optimized over more and more input data. And that resulting in instant translation between any language, but not just human, any kind of pattern in any kind of data. English to French, sure. But English to computer code, sure. English to fMRI, no problem. In fact, simple patterns in the way humans interact with the invisible Wi-Fi signals all around us is a language that you can convert to English to figure out how many people are in a room without even taking a photograph or having any information other than the Wi-Fi. And for the foreseeable future, like over the horizon, I think it's just gonna be pretty much good news, I would say. Like it'll displace jobs, but I don't think that will hit for a few years in most cases. I I thought it'd be much quicker with like self-driving cars, but the more I look into that data, it seems like truck drivers and stuff will be navigating for quite a bit longer. And if you saw my video that was like predictions for 2024, I don't think like quantum computing or robots are gonna hit next year, but large language models, chat GPT stuff, llama, auto GPT, on your refrigerator, your toaster, your cell phone, that's very possible. And that alone will probably lead to five, 10, maybe even 20 years of just breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. We're gonna see so many diseases cured. We should easily come up with the solution to things like poverty that have plagued us forever. AI should give us answers to how to govern ourselves and how to connect with community in a way that we've never had solutions to before. But the danger comes in a very subtle way. I don't think it's gonna be a big moment, but that flywheel of effect where the code is just updating the code and people are so used to using it to solve problems and every problem in every industry is just getting solved quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and that flywheel is moving and spinning so fast that it is never gonna stop. And if we look around and things are like overly blissful or something's out of control and it's doing something we don't want it to, but its objective function is misaligned, the whole alignment problem thing, like 
we're just gonna have to live in that world. And because I see that, and I'm gonna keep making all these videos talking about how cool AI is, I wanted to make sure that I didn't pretend that I don't see the dark side to it, and that's why I'm gonna title this video, My Humble Attempt to Sound the Alarm. Now honestly, deep down, if you say, is this video gonna have an impact, I'm almost positive that it won't. I mean like, as if my video is gonna be shown to like the president of China, and he's gonna say, oh yeah, this is dangerous. Well, we'll do a full stop. Let me call up Biden, and then we'll stop all this military AI, because that's one of the ways that it could go rogue that would be really bad and then all the big tech companies say, oh yeah, this is actually probably not the world we want, so why don't we just quit while we're ahead? And even if that did work, the cat's out of the bag. We know that the attention mechanism applied to a large language model does fantastic things, and some open source community somewhere would do something with it to recreate it. And now that this Pandora's box is open, we are like lemmings and we are going to run off the cliff. I, it's just, it's inevitable at this point. But I did want to point you towards this video. It's from the Center for Human Technology and it's called The AI Dilemma. And I just was like really impacted by it. I was just listening to it like I always do just for research and interesting talking points. So these two guys, Tristan and Aza, they really studied social media and they figured out some of the really negative and really positive effects that it's had on society. And they've published some really great documentaries that explain what we could have done if we could rewind time and kind of roll it out differently. And this video was them applying that same logic and thinking to the next wave of artificial intelligence and how it's going to impact our society. So this video is going to talk about how language might be the big key, the LLM that I was talking about earlier, to all of the other problems. Like 10 years ago, it used to be all these different AI disciplines have really been unified under this idea of a tokenized latent space that translates, which means all those researchers that were out on the branches have all come back in to contribute to the trunk of the tree, meaning the tree is going to grow really fast now. They show off a whole bunch of demos that just show how powerful our artificial intelligence is getting from the voice cloning to the AI image generations. They talk about the dangers of TikTok, mostly in the way that it can just spread disinformation using artificial intelligence, and we probably will never even notice, but it will have a big influence on our culture. And probably the biggest eye-opening moment for me in this video was when we realized that GPT-4 has been out there working with all these people, and we haven't really understood how much of a theory of mind it actually has. They also point out how certain emergent properties just pop into existence, like it sometimes just learns how to do math or how to speak a language, even if none of that was in the training data. And I say emergent because it seems to happen like gradually and then all at once. Like the way you can lower the temperature in a glass of water and then it just like freezes, just snaps. That's the emergence. And finally, they talk about how there's a whole set of responsibilities that we don't even know that we need to account for yet because they're just gonna show up with the new technology. They point to how the founding fathers when they wrote the constitution didn't need like the right to be forgotten because there was no tools to record information about us permanently forever that we needed to delete. And with AI, it's gonna know things like potentially reading our brain through fMRI scans that like we never had laws in place to like protect thoughts, but we might need to because now there's a tool that can probably read our thoughts soon. So if you're still with me on this video, I'm kind of sorry I had to put you through that, but this just, this is one of those important things that we have to talk about. And I would encourage you to watch this video if you wanna continue the conversation or throw some comments down below. As a channel with less than 3000 subscribers, I get maybe like four or five have comments per video, so I will read it. I would love to start a discussion with you. I will respond. And if you like it, smash that subscribe button.